This week on the GAA preview, we're looking ahead to matches involving Donegal, Tyrone and Derry. Gary McDaid, former Donegal under-20 manager, uh, former senior selector and three-time winner of the Dr. Maguire Cup, the Donegal Senior Club Championship, joins us today. Gary, uh, a very good afternoon. Welcome to Highland Sport once again. Good morning, Oshin. Thanks very much. Delighted to be here. I suppose, first of all, Gary, uh, Armagh and Tyrone both allowed 400 fans plus into their games this weekend. Armagh hosting Donegal, Tyrone hosting Monaghan. Is it an unfair advantage in your view? Yeah, l- l- listen, Oshin, um, if you're the home team, you'd be absolutely delighted that uh, you, you have the fans behind you this weekend. I mean, the game was in the Melton Park late on, even though there's only 400 in there. They could make the difference. I mean, it was a big. You could see it. The, the, the teams in the Premiership across the water last weekend were delighted as well. Granted, there was a lot more in the stadium, but they're a lot bigger stadium, I suppose. But you know, if you're done a and home this weekend, you'd be really, really happy. So you would that, that you had the fans uh, um, behind you because and these games, a lot of these games in Division One are going down to the wire, so it could, it could make a difference. It could have an influence. And listen, it's it's a it's a wee pro for Armagh this weekend. It's it's, it's a mark a, a tick against Donegal. Donegal got ripped open last week, conceding four goals against Monaghan. They could they could have conceded a lot more. Um, is it going to be something similar this week, or are we, are we going to expect uh, Donegal sort of to, to fill those holes with the back, uh, Gary, and particularly down the wings? I listen. Um, I would always look back at us. You know, league is league, and uh, championships are completely different game. And teams don't want to be showing their hand totally at the minute. So. You know, like I don't think you're going to see everything that they're going to be doing in championship, but I think possibly, you know, they're definitely going to look to make sure they're not as maybe open at the back this weekend. You might see Hugh McFadden or possibly Patrick Morgan drop into that area around six when they do have the ball or around the top of the D to try and block some of those holes because they're not going to want to go out maybe and concede concede the amount of goals that they conceded last weekend again because they're, they're going to want to build confidence again going forward and, and by to give yourself a chance going into the game, you know, you can't be, you can't be conceding four goals because you're not going to win too many games conceding four goals. Yeah. Big miss last week, of course, was Michael Murphy. He may not appear this week. He may not appear next week. We mightn't see him until the first round of the championship or quite possibly the second. We just don't, don't know at this stage how he is with, with, with that hamstring injury. But it took Donegal a while to to um, get into the, the, the workings of things without Michael last week. Yeah, did and like if you think back, we were actually I think eight or nine points down at the time, and uh, as you said, it, it took a while. But what impressed me, Oshin, was the way that the lads stuck in and and uh, really clawed their way back into the game, and and there was a great great resolve among the groups, so it was and, and among the players, and no doubt that'll stick them. And what what I was really really happy was the, was the way that the players stood up to be counted. You know, people are often saying in in our county and even outside our county, Oshin, they're, they're often saying. What will Donegal do without Michael Murphy? What will Donegal do without Michael Murphy whenever he retires? You know, I mean, as you said, it took a while to be set last week, but you have to be delighted with the way Patrick McBurdy scored up. I think he had eight or nine points in the end up. Oshin Gallen, Niall O'Donnell, um, I mean, they all contributed on, on the scoreboard and contributed handsomely. And we have to remember Niall and, uh, and the likes of Oshin Gallen are only young Cubs as well, not that long out of under 20s. Yeah. We have to mention Owen McNeilis too, who uh, was solid when he came in in the second half. Would he be in line for a starting role this week, would he? I, I, I just thought he gave us a real calm and influence, Oshin, when he came into the game. And he just o- oozes that class that he does. And uh, nothing... Uh, <laughs> Nothing, nothing bothers him. You, 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 you know, you, you, you couldn't get a rise out of him. The opposition are wasting their time trying to get a rise of him. He takes everything in a stride, and I think he brings a calmness to the whole situation. And and you know, looking at the way players went off injured last week, we seem to be carrying you know more than Michael injury wise. Uh, the likes of Owen Van and Hugh McFadden, etc., went off, and Brendan McCall. No, all seem to be carrying knocks. So, uh, you know, I think we'll definitely see Owen McNeil's game time this week. Whether or not he starts, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, we could see a handful of changes from the side, which which lined out last week. But what sort of game are you expecting then, then Gary? Uh, obviously, Kieran Donahue's in there uh, looking after the forwards of, of Armagh. Uh, the last time we were at the athletic ground, or the last time we played Armagh in the championship, turned out to be a comfortable one. So it did uh, for, for Donegal. The last time we were at the athletic grounds was a different story. We lost, of course, to Kevin and in, in the Ulster final. But listen, what sort of game do you think we're going to have? What can we expect now at the athletic grounds on Saturday evening? Uh, well, probably looking at our marsh, you know, I, I think they have a, 
a great new life uh, and a great new energy about them. Maybe that maybe Kieran Dunne's helped to bring this out. There's a freshness certainly about them, and now they're playing a very a very demanding style. Like they they never remind me back to Donegal back in 2012. They, they they kick a bit of ball, but not not. The one kick amount the same b- ball that Donegal kick. They're very much into the running game, Oshin. So they are, and they run the ball hard, coming from defence. And I would say that's probably Oshin that, that what affected them so bad injury wise last week because they were killing themselves getting out of defence. And it's so I think they lost four defenders. I think it was seven subs altogether. They lost. So they're going to be down men this weekend. They're going to be going deep into their reserves as well, and they're going to be. Definitely not coming with everyone available. This the same as Donegal. I think inside, Oshin Rory Grogan has really stepped up this year. Like he's had eleven points in the in the two games, and he he looks a threat inside along with Young O'Neill. You have the two O'Neills, one in midfield, Kane and Rain, and one in full forward. And, uh, two lads I would know for a, a long time because it would have played uh, McCrory against us here in the college. They would have went to some Coleman's and Uries and quality footballers. I mean, you saw you probably saw the pass yourself last week that. Uh, Rain had under the under the fall forward that got the goal against Tr- Tyrone. Like they're just typical cross McGlenn players, loving to kick the ball. So they are. So I think they have, they have a very balanced mix. They would bring a very bring great honesty to the game. So they do. They're nearly actually maybe a, a, you know I think, I think maybe naive you know, but they're it might be the right word to, to use. But they're so innocent and they're you know they're not just maybe fully street wise at the minute. So so, so they're not. But with the likes of McGinney and. Uh, and uh, Donny and there, listen, that will come. And they have two points on the board already. So I, I think they'll be absolutely, absolutely delighted where they are, that they're still going into the last game and have a chance to go for the semi-final of the league. Yeah. Is Donegal more streetwise, if you want to call it, Gary? Do you expect Donegal to win on Saturday? Donegal are definitely a streetwise team. I mean, you talked there about the Cavan game, Oshin, uh last year. Probably, Oshin, this current group... Have, would would have beaten every team that we'd expect them to beat in years gone by, apart from that Cavan game last year. And I think they'll take huge learning from that. And even last weekend, Oshin them learn massively from it. I mean, like it's a great stick for the management team to beat them this week. Now, I mean, conceding those four goals um, and making sure we should we sh- we shore up at the back and and be more comfortable at the back and maybe not not as open at the back. So. Uh, Donegal are definitely they're a lot further down the track than the current Armagh team. Um, I I think we're, we're we have a nice blend there. The man we've we've very mobile players, we're very physical players, we're very uh, agile players. We just have, have have good strength strength and depth as well. well. Wouldn't be a big surprise if Armagh were to win on Saturday with you, would it, Gary? On the other side of that. Uh, well, you know, I think what goes in our favour on Saturday is probably the amount of injuries that Armagh picked up as well. Last weekend, I think that could come back to, to bite them. I, I mean, I, I, I was watching that game and, and geez, they were going off left, right and centre. I, I think they nearly run out of subs and I heard McGinney complain during the week about the, the sub rule as well. I think it was seven they used. But um, I, I, I I, fancy Donegal to, to win the game. Why? Because I think you'll see a reaction Oshin out of them after, after after last week, you know, after conceding that that four goals. The way they finished the game, Oshin, they couldn't have won the game last week, you know, they, they finished very strongly. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the other match in Division 1 North, Tyrone against uh, Monaghan. We've seen two sort of different Tyrone sides. We've seen the, the team that lost to Donegal and then we've seen <laughs> the team that, that came out and beat Armagh. Tyrone now are in a, in a position where they know that if they take a result against uh, Monaghan that they'll be through to, to a semi-final. But Monaghan will be buoyed by that fantastic performance against Donegal, particularly in the first half, even though they will be disappointed that, that they didn't win the game. How's this one going to go, Gary? Um, listen, it, it'll, I think it'll be in the home straight, Oshin, before we, before we know what, what way it's going to go. The big thing probably, Oshin, that uh, I really enjoyed last week from the Monon Donegal game from a, a Monon point of view was uh, Rory Began. I just thought he brought a whole new facet to the game. Yes, we're, we're well aware of him coming out the field and we're well aware of what he can do as kickers, but I thought the way he he came out the field, Oshin, continuously, continuously, so he did, and offered that outlet. I just thought no one has done it to that level that Rory Began ha- has done it last week. And you know what? It nearly encouraged Sean Patton in to come out the field on the far side. Which we, we, did, we let we, him, did, he, did we let him do it too much, Gary, is the other side of it? Well, see, when I was chatting with a couple of boys during, during the week and they said that to me as well, but, but you know, why did they not go to Began and, 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 and tackle him? But see, you've, 
you have to work, think about then. Begging nearly wants the opposition to come to him because he can offload. Then if you leave your man, your man's free then and he and your man will get up the field because everyone else you know is very much playing the man to man with a, a plus one at times and not even every time last week. So there were but so Gary, the, I, Monaghan had 14 men in the pitch when he was doing it. Yeah, which was which we have one extra. Exactly. Well, uh, that's a very good point. So that's probably where our plus one was, Ajin. So, so, so you you bring a very good point there. We definitely should have pushed up on him. You know, the, w- w- when you think of that, because I, I think Ajin as well. You know, they had the fourteen men when uh, we conceded three goals in the first half. You know, we had an extra man at that stage as well. So we had they had the black card at the time. But I I just think he's brought a new dimension to goalkeeping after last weekend and. It, and, you know, and the likes of Sean Patton, you know, Sean would have up here at the college would have played midfield for us. And, and then it was only when he got the senior keeper, a senior house in the college that he ended up going back into goals. And so we did. So, like, I think there's huge avenues for goalkeepers to really, oh, she, this year in the championship to be a huge outlet. I, like, I was so impressed with the outlet that he created last week for, for, for modern, you know, and you have him now against Niall Morgan this weekend, probably the two best at it, Oshin, in the country. Mm-hmm. So it could be a real exciting game. Of, uh, it'd be interesting, Oshin, to go back to your point, will any team go to him or go to Morgan and take the ball off them? Because, they, you know, both minded teams are going to have to answer that question in the preparation this week. Yeah, but Tyrone will be in a, a good position playing at home as well. They're going to have the home supporters there too, just like just like Garman. It's probably taken a number of weeks for Tyrone sort of to bet into things, has it? Yeah, and you know, probably one man maybe who hasn't maybe set the world alight and they they were really looking forward to doing it was Connor McKenna. You know, like he's probably he's been quiet enough in the games, and they're probably expecting a lot more from him. He's quiet enough last weekend as well. But one player maybe that really stood up for Tron last weekend, and I was shocked so it was Darren McCurry, you know, at at center forward. And suppose he played up the field Oshin. Last week he didn't do what he what he did maybe in the past, which run, running back and chasing back like like they always did. He played basically as a centre forward on the forty five. Was a huge out for them, outlet for them. Looked Oshin a lot leaner, a lot trimmer. Looked looked like a, a fellow who who has fulfilled the potential that he showed years ago when he broke onto the scene first. So he's definitely a player maybe that they that that they. They didn't. They never thought of maybe the public that they would have had back to that form, and of course, then Peter Hart has really stepped it up last week. And after a very poor showing against Dummy Gall, it was it was excellent last week. I thought off the ball and on the ball, and the way Oshini went for long goal that he banged in from about twenty meters out, like it just shows you the ability he has, like the power the keepers never expect on from long distance. Yeah. Well, who you, who are you going to call to win that one then, Gary? I think, you know, Oshin, what I, I love what Monon are doing. I love the way that they're bringing all this youth through, that they have so much youth and, and uh, energy in their team. And I, I, I think, you know, Tyrone at home in Oma just will have a wee bit too much for the youthfulness of, of Monon. Yeah. Uh, one other game involving a Northwest County Derry. Uh, Roy Geller's side going to the Ulster Champions, Cavan. Cavan. Uh, have had a tricky start to the year. Derry back to back ones, looking to make it three. This is a tie that very that Derry are very much capable of getting something out of on on the road on on a Saturday afternoon, Gary, and and continue and stay on course for promotion out of that division. Yeah, and <laughs> listen, who would ever thought, Oshin, the score lines that they're hitting up at the minute? I think, I think they're possibly top scores across the, the 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 four leagues at the minute. Like, I mean, they they absolutely walloped. For Mana last week after Wallop and Longford the week before. And we have to remember the first week for Mana beat Cabin by a point. So we did last week in a fantastic game that I actually managed to watch myself at the time. And I, I, I never saw that result coming last weekend. You know, I, I mean, from talking to people, I think Longford maybe didn't they, they look after themselves during lockdown and they're a long way off the pace. So they were. And so therefore, no one really expected that result. So that obviously shows actually they're in super form at the minute. And um, I don't know what what their number one supporter Joe Brawley what way is going to react to this. So yes, at the moment we with the with the amount of scores going on because they've been very sore on 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 them in years gone by. Yeah, and that's the wrong course to get promotion, but they need to get out of Division Three. So they do. They need to get out of there before the championship, Gary. If they have ambitions to win an Ulster Championship, Boston, you're 100 percent right. They need to get out of three. They have they have to get into two. And listen, 
suppose they have the advantage, Josh, you know, going up to the marshes to watch Donegal and Down and never underestimate that, that there, the, you know, that advantage of teams uh, going in, watching you, having a free pass to see everything that you're doing, you know, and to prepare, go away and prepare then and to try and not nullify your strengths and try and exploit any weaknesses you have. So, listen, no, no doubt uh, Derry are more than capable to, to do that. And, listen, they'll be lying in the long grass, hopefully with them Donegal, please God. Okay, listen, uh, Gary, thanks for joining us uh, today on our preview. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Good morning, Oshin. All the best.